All right, so we are here at Hodinkee headquarters in New York City. We have a very special guest. Uh, this is Robert Yan Brewer. Uh, Robert Yan is the founder of Fratello Watches, uh, a longtime uh, kind of uh, stalwart of, of the watch world and a longtime friend of mine. Uh, and today he's in New York for an Omega event, but while he was in town, I figured we'd get him on camera to talk about what is arguably the hottest watch in the world right now. And this is the Speedy Tuesday edition Omega Speedmaster. So how did this watch come to be? We had an event with uh, Omega in uh, Biel last year. Uh, a Speedy Tuesday event. Just before the event started, I had a little uh, meeting with uh, Mr. Ashleyman, CEO of, uh, of Omega. I told him basically that uh, we started Speedy Tuesday in 2012, um, which means 2017 is five years of, of Speedy Tuesday. I basically asked him if we could do something special, and not a cap or a t-shirt or a pen or a button, yeah. but actually a, a watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he said, uh, let's do it. And just like that? Just like that. Not much later, he came up with a, a watch with a radial dial. Yep. That's something we really fancied because in the first year of Speedy Tuesday in 2012, we actually had an original radial dial watch from 78, mm -hmm. from a former astronaut, and that made such a huge impression, that watch. So we decided to use that as input for this watch. But we didn't want to replicate that watch uh, one by one, so we came up with a reverse panda dial. Omega did Panda dials uh, before in the 60s, but never on a Speedmaster Professional. I think there's a Speedmaster Reduced that also has a reverse Panda dial, but this is the first Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch with a reverse Panda dial. Did you expect the world to go so crazy over this watch? No, I uh, had some sleepless nights right before, <laughs> because uh, 2012 pieces, referring to the first year of, Speed of Speedy Tuesday, I began to think 2012 is a lot of pieces. And nobody knew about this project except for us at Fratello Watches and Omega. And we believe in the watch and we really love it, but it doesn't mean everyone should love it or loves it. So then I thought 2012 is a lot of pieces and I hope they, they sell. And I thought, okay, well, perhaps a few days, but I didn't, couldn't ever imagine that it would be a few hours. So it feels pretty good. It feels pretty good. <laughs> so something I've always wondered, I and mean, we've known each other for a long time, you love Omega. And it seems mm -hmm. like the, the, the folks from the Netherlands love Omega. Yeah. Why is it that, that all the, the Dutchmen that I know just adore Omega and not, say, Rolex or Jaeger or IWC or anything like that? Well, I think there's a lot of love for Rolex and IWC and, and Jaeger as well in the Netherlands. But you have to know that um, Omega was really popular in the 50s and the 60s in the Netherlands. I even think it was the number one brand at the time. Um, so a lot of people have uh, fathers and grandfathers that actually bought or have received an Omega watch in those days, even if they worked for a long time at a company, they received an Omega, like a Seamaster de Ville or a Constellation. So there's quite a bit of heritage with Omega in the Netherlands. And your father yourself had an Omega. And my grandfather and, and grandmother grandpa. and my mother. And uh, yeah, so it's a bit of a family thing and that's how it started. So yeah, I'm uh, quite uh, focused on Speedmaster and I collect Speedmasters. I love all sorts of watches and we cover all sorts of watches, but I collect Speedmasters myself, so that has a special place. 